Hey, you're watching Driver88. Today I've got a little bit of a different vlog for you guys uh, than usual. I've noticed that I guess people who are interested in cars often also have a great interest in mechanical watches. And I thought that I would just show you, uh, I guess my collection in its current state, as well as talk about my interest in the topic um, and stuff that I've owned in the past and all, I guess, hopefully some other interesting stories about how I came to uh, collect some of these pieces um, and explain them and then we can have a bit of a discussion at the end. So stereotypically, sorry, there's quite a lot of Rolex, I guess, heavy uh, amount of pieces in the collection, but um, I don't know, sue me about that. Um, <laughs> There is a number of pieces that I also wish that I didn't sell and I guess my, my taste over this last, I'd say about 11 years uh, since I started has also slowly moved about as some people could probably relate to. So back in 2016, I think I bought my first uh, mechanical uh, Swiss watch, which was a Rolex Hulk Submariner. I can even put, just for interest's sake, uh, the receipt up on screen at the moment because um, I bought it for retail pr price, believe it or not. So in the last eight years, uh, things have just gone bananas with this hobby or with this, uh, I guess, enthusiasm for mechanical watches. Um, and prices, of course, have shot up, had a fair, I guess, tapering off at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's definitely become an expensive hobby if you let it. So the first watch I'm gonna show you is something that I've picked up recently. Uh, it's a Rolex Skydweller with a blue dial and a Jubilee band. Um, this is quite a chunky boy. It's really quite pretty though. I really especially love the way the sun bounces off this blue dial. Um, it is very comfortable, although it does sit a little bit high. It's relatively thick, um, but definitely have been loving wearing this. I got it from a Melbourne AD not that long ago, um, and it's really been taking up a lot of time on my wrist. You might've seen in some videos and stuff, and just a really, really cool watch. Um, I love Jubilee bands uh, as the way that they, um, bounce off the fluted bezel as well. Um, sky dwellers are just very, very cool. And I've seen a number of new models have been released just recently. So that's the Sky. Um, the next watch I have is automotive inspired from a very small brand um, called Autodromo. Um, and this one is a Group B chronograph. It's inspired by the Lancia, is it Delta or Lancia S4 rally car? Um, the twin charged, very, uh, I guess, unique looking a rally car and the color scheme is basically influenced or an homage to that so this is a pretty cool chronograph it's titanium as well as steel the band is probably the thing that i like most about it it's so comfortable to wear you've got a dual clasp and i've been wearing this a lot as well recently manual wind um, but i tell you what after a couple of months of owning it I feel like I should have bought just the normal blue Group B. I'm a person who kind of likes pretty simple taste and there's a lot of color and stuff going on here. Um, and I hope I don't get sick of it further, but maybe I should have bought the blue Group B. Um, that is also on the wrist of my, probably one of my favorite YouTubers as well, as a gentleman called uh, David Chironi. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. And he's definitely one of my favorite YouTubers. So look him up. I'll put a picture up of him here and he's got one of these and um, yeah, his vlogs are just the best. I love his uh, editing style as well as his stuff that he does on YouTube. Now, the third watch. This is the oldest watch that I have in the collection. It's just hit, as far as I remember, it's just turned 50 years old. How cool is that? So this is a very, very special watch for me. This is an Omega, um, which is a gold watch and very delicate. Um, this was given to my grandmother from my grandfather 50 years ago. Um, and I just love the style. I love the fact that I can just kind of keep it and look at it now and again. It's just some nostalgic history. It was owned by my grandmother, who was a beloved matriarch of that, that one side of the family. Um, so I love the way that it has just a domed crystal, which gives it this 3D effect. The champagne dial is just lovely. Yeah, I just love the fact that I own this thing and it's just connected to a person that I love very much. So this one always, I guess, sits very well protected and looked after um, and always is with me somewhere. The next watch also relates to my grandmother is a quartz watch, a Rado ceramic, um, which was given to me for my 21st birthday. So <laughs> this watch, I don't 
I guess, wear it a lot. Um, it's completely different style, super thin compared to the other stuff that I have. I guess it's a dress watch. It is pretty cool looking though. Again, I think, yeah, dual sort of claspy thing, um, but black and gold, I mean, maybe I guess with a suit and tie or a black tie, I think it would sort of go. Super light, very comfortable. Um, yeah, you won't even know that it's on and that was given to me by my grandmother. So also lots of sentimental value and often sits with the, the Omega as well um, that she used to own. Now, next watch, and this is again, one of my favorites in the collection is another Rolex. It's my Rolex uh, Pepsi GMT Master II. Um, I got this guy in 2020 when it was released. So these are my kind of all time favorite watches. I've owned a number of Submariners in the past and as my taste has changed, I realized that why do I own these Submariners and at one point an Amiga Deep Sea when I have no interest in marine whatsoever. I don't have a boat, I'm not interested in skiing on the water, I'm not a yachtsman, anything like that. So over time I just have kind of moved more towards GMTs and chronographs. Um, this watch I wear the most out of anything else, it's the most beat up. I just love this thing to death. and. Um, Speaking of, I guess, family stuff, usually when I wind this guy up and wear it for a few days, I try and set the GMT hand to the city where my father and my grandmother were born. Um, and I've got a number of sort of family members and cousins there that I talk to often. And I try and have this set to that time so I cannot message them at three in the morning when I want to talk about whatever or share something with them. So yeah, my Pepsi GMT, uh, definitely never going away from this collection. I love it. You'll usually see it um, that I'm wearing on all the videos and stuff. Absolutely love this thing. Uh, it's very, very comfortable. I just love the GMT function and the colors. Classic, absolutely classic. I would like to find potentially a birthier one of these. So 1988, um, which, which I think still you can get, I can't remember if the, the uh, bracelet is all polished or if it's two-tone, like a gloss and, and polish, but yeah, very, very cool. So. From there, uh, we'll go to my Speedmaster, which is also one of the very early watches that I bought uh, when I started this journey with mechanical watches. It is a Speedmaster 50th anniversary. I think that was 1957 to 2007. Um, yeah, absolutely love this thing. I had it for about six years. Uh, I would wear it all the time on a strap and I just think it looked so good. Uh, it was a bit under the radar because I guess, of course, Omega has lots of limited editions, but this one had a Frederick Piguet movement um, and I used to just love looking at it and starting, starting the chrono and uh, wear it all the time. Uh, that watch I sold to buy a uh, sapphire and diamond platinum ring, uh, which I gave to a beautiful woman at the time. Sadly, the, the watch is no longer with me, nor is the ring, nor is the, the woman. So. I guess that's just a story, a bit of background uh, as just a life, you know, a life lesson there, I guess you could say. Uh, because I used to love wearing that Speedy so much on different leather straps, I wanted to replace it, but they're not easy to find these things. Um, so it's a, the 50th anniversary Speedy. So I've replaced it with something that's like a third of the cost and I'm excited because it's coming in the mail. It's a relatively new micro brand, you could call it. It's called a Baltic Tricompax and it looks like a vintage Daytona for 1% of the price. And I am so excited to get this thing and put all different color straps on it and wear it all the time because um, I just love sports inspired watches and um, this thing should look really, really cool on the wrist. Maybe I'll show it to you in a future video. <sighs> I'm running out of breath here. Okay, so. That's the Baltic Tricompax. Now we get to a bit of fun. So the next is a Timex. I bought this again just because I'm just getting into sort of some more affordable, cheaper watches. This is one of two quartz watches that I have um, in the collection. And this guy is just a bit of fun. Like I just love the colorway of the green and green, green, uh, blue and gold. Um, yes, this bracelet does rip your hairs out if you're into that. Um, <laughs> but I just love this thing. I've been wearing it a fair bit. Um, and I do wish that Timex made a colorway like this in an automatic GMT. Um, but look, this is just one of those things where I'll just wear it randomly at times and people are going to love it or hate it. And sometimes I think it's important to have just a bit of that in your life. Um, so speaking of a colorway like this, uh, with gold, not real gold, uh, and blue, I used to also own a Submariner bluesy, a full yellow gold. This was the most badass watch that I probably ever owned and I absolutely loved it. I wear it a lot. 
Um, but again, like I said with the Submariner thing, it had to take place or had to uh, move away because uh, I can't afford to keep every watch that I've ever owned for, um, I guess, my close enough to a grail, right? Um, this is the second day donor I've owned, but this is my favorite watch of all time. Um, this thing I love beyond whatever. I picked it up not that long ago in London uh, because here in Australia, if you don't know, we have super high prices of everything, high taxes, and not much to choose from. It comes with cars as well as watches. So I flew uh, to London and got to see uh, Carwell and their shareholder uh, meeting, Q&A. And as part of that, uh, I picked up this, uh, I'm losing my mind here, Rolex Daytona, uh, white gold with a blue face, 116509 I think. I call this the non-F-boy John Mayer. If you're into watches, if you're into Daytonas, you know what I'm talking about. This thing is just incredible for so many reasons. One, because it flies under the radar. Anyone who sees this watch, they're not gonna know what it is or really care if they're not really into Rolexes or Daytonas. It's just got this beautiful heft to it being white gold. And of course, it's all about the dial. It's just all about the dial. It's just absolutely gorgeous to look at. Um, in the right like uh, glare of sun, it just comes up beautifully. I love the, uh, the polished combination with the brushed sides and the brushed end links on the band um, just looks so nice. They've just got this beautiful white gold hue to them. I love this watch so much. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I thought I would regret it and I don't. Uh, I'm kind of scared to wear it a little bit so that's why I guess I'll be wearing the Baltic and the other chronos but man I love this watch so much. Anyway so before I keep going on and gushing over this <laughs> Daytona um, that is pretty much the collection. I've got lots of previous stuff that I've owned in the past, but I'm just going to bore you with all that sort of thing. And yeah, that is it guys. So that is my watch collection and I'll see you next time.